today we're going to compare two three inch polishers on the left the flex pxe 80 cordless unit versus the griot's garage g8 corded unit all right i'm just going to go over some of the uh information here before i roll into the uh the video footage so the flex comes with two 12 volt batteries and a charger uh, I would say you get about 30 minutes, give or take, per battery at, um, at full, full, uh, full speed. The G8 is a corded unit, um, so there's no issues with, uh, with running out of power. Both of these machines are 8 millimeter orbits. Uh, the flex is rated at 5800 oscillations per minute, where the G8 is a little bit more powerful at 6400 oscillations per minute. Um, I don't really notice any additional power out of each one uh, when it's in use. This one might vibrate a little bit more, which makes it seem a little bit more powerful, but I would say that as far as how powerful it feels to the user, um, the differences are almost negligible. Now. Uh, the flex uh, has a random orbit as well as a rotary function, um, whereas the G8 is an uh, all-time random uh, function. Each machine can use a 1-inch, a 2-inch, and a 3-inch backing plate. Um, however, the flex is only rated to use the 1-inch in rotary mode. There's a uh, quick, quick disconnect um, orbits here. Um, there's an extension bar that goes in there that makes it a rotary versus a random orbit. Um, but I'm not going to go into that today. I am strictly going to go into um, these machines in their random orbit function mode with a three inch pad. Uh, Talking about weight, the Flex comes in at 2.3 pounds, where the G8 is almost twice the weight uh, at 4.2 pounds. Um, the big kicker between these two is the price. This machine, $400. The G8, you're coming in almost 150. It's a big jump between price, so you know, you really want to weigh your options. Do you want to spend money? Do you want to have the same outcome with a much uh, cheaper price-wise machine? Um, do you want to constantly have to deal with a corded machine draping around the shop, possibly hitting up against the vehicle? Or um, do you want to realize that the industry is going uh, cordless? So. Personally, I don't think that uh, I want to be tripping over a cord. However, everybody's budget is different, so I don't think necessarily that the high price uh, justifies the no cord. So uh, I think at that point, it's pretty subjective. All right, so let's go into the video footage and see how these machines compare to one another.
So, 
You saw in the video me taking uh, paint depth uh, readings as well as um, gloss readings throughout the video. So I added up all the numbers, I took their averages, and I'm going to go through the data right now. Um, so that test panel was uh, scuffed with using uh, 3000 grit sandpaper as evenly as I could across the whole, uh, the whole hood. Um, I took readings uh, at the 3000 uh, sandpaper level and what we came up with um, on each side of the panel was uh, approximately 111 microns on the flex side and 117 microns on the Griot's G8 side. Um, at the time it was sanded, um, the flex was 20 gloss units where the Griot's uh, was about 41 gloss units. We came in, uh, I cut it with the Koch Chemi H9, which knocked it down to 107 microns. The Griots using the same H9 was 107 microns. So there's definitely, as you can see, a, a level, a heavy level of cut using this machine. I think that paint on the hood which I believe is a Ford Ranger, uh, was pretty soft paint. So definitely very aggressive here. Came in with the um, yellow Rupaz pad on an F, with an F6 compound. And um, the paint depth after that was 92 microns. And the Griot's was 95 microns. Um, at the end of the test, both of them yielded the same uh, gloss units at 122. So going by the numbers, it seemed that the flex was a little bit more aggressive than the Griots. Um, I did not have any uh, means to constantly monitor the amount of weight and pressure uh, put on the pad. Um, I did it just by feel. So there is definitely a level of subjectivity to these results. However, um, it shows that the battery powered unit is as powerful or in this case a little bit more powerful than the corded unit. So I think this kind of debunks the myth that the corded units um, are more powerful than that of the battery. Um, these uh, lithium ion batteries, there's no um, tapering off of power as they go through the cycle. They're either working or there's uh, electronics inside that just cut the battery off after it reaches a certain voltage. So, you know, you don't feel the power slowing down or being reduced. It's the, the machine either works or it doesn't. When the battery power is too low, the machine cuts out and you know it's time to uh, swap out your battery, put a new one in, and then continue on working. So there's no there's, you know, there's no um, inconsistencies with your work. The machine works or it doesn't work. So um, I hope you, um, you know, take this with a grain of salt, but you can make your own determination now is, do you want to spend the money on a cordless machine um, or do you want to spend a half or less with a corded uh, machine? Um, again, I think it's subjective. Uh, looking at the actual finished results of the panel um, between both sides, I saw little to no discrepancy where um, at this point I would say it's up to the user to figure out what kind of machine that they want. Um, I think in my opinion, judging by the numbers, judging by looking at the panel out in the sun, that the um, finished results were identical. So hope that helps everybody. I hope it doesn't cause more confusion, but uh, if you have any questions or anything you want to add, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the future.